Goldilocks Productions provides professional internet, TV, and radio shows in the spiritual and new age genre. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spiritual Insight Show. I am Reverend Tiffany White, Sage Woman, and I am very excited to be with each and every one of you this evening um, live. <laughs> and also for those that are going to watch in, in the archives as well. So thank you, everyone, who um, does participate and show up. Uh, we're sitting in sacred circle and space is being held for you. If you're not watching or listening now and you go and listen to it later, the space is still held for you. So welcome to this healing circle. And uh, I just would like to encourage everyone to please watch live from Facebook on the Facebook page, Goldilocks Productions. And that's Goldilocks with a Y. I go to Locks Productions. This is where you can comment, um, you can ask questions uh, in the comments, and I'd be happy to to answer uh, any questions that you have, and then even um, the comments as we go through uh, some of the the uh, the messages for this evening and some of the channeling later. So, if you have any questions or any comments. This is very much, I'd like to have some participation. Um, now, I do have the radio running um, as a backup for my recording and for those that like to listen via radio and by calling in to listen, that's, that's thank you so much for everyone that's listening. I will not be taking calls though from those that call in. Um, what I would like for the callers to do is to get onto Facebook Go on to the Facebook page, Goldilocks Productions, and you can ask your questions and put your comments there. All right. So um, this, again, like I said, very, very interactive um, via this way. And it's going to be via Facebook Live. It's, gonna, it's so much fun when we do it this way. It really is. So thank you, everyone. Uh, even if you have called in. I'm not going to give the call that number because if you're watching live, you don't need to call in. And then there's a delay <laughs> between um, when you call in with the radio and then watch it live on TV. So that kind of delay can be a little frustrating and annoying. So I highly recommend that you, uh, the way to view and participate this evening, like I said, is via Facebook Live or face my Facebook page, Goldilocks Productions. And that's Goldilocks with the Y. And you will be able to participate this evening. But welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining in. All right. Uh, so it's, wow, it's just another beautiful, beautiful Monday evening. And here we are in June. So let's welcome June, the month of June. Yay! <laughs> And uh, the time is going by so fast, isn't it? We've talked about this before. And um, it really, really is um, just going by so fast. And a lot of people are having, um, I think, a hard time lately as well. Uh, and so it's okay if you're having a hard time. You know that we're all going through it. And, and it's just uh, when, when you feel like, the ground underneath of you, uh, or the rug they call it, is is pulled out from underneath your feet. It really is kind of hard sometimes to, um, to you know, to keep your footing and just like you feel like you're you're grounded. But we'll talk more about that in, in a few minutes. But again, um, so we're into June already, June fifth. <laughs> Uh, and just a reminder that the full moon is this Friday, June 9th. It's going to have at 9, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And it is going to be in the afternoon for those uh, east of us, like in, in the U.K. All right. So 
um, 9-11, full moon on Friday. So this is the time between the, the waxing, the, the moon is in the waxing stage from the, from the new moon to the full moon. All right, so um, it's at the waxing stage. This is a great time for you to um, to cut your hair. <laughs> uh, if anything that you would like to have grow very quickly. Uh, so let's just say like when you cut your hair in the waxing phase, it will grow back faster. It'll grow faster. And the same thing is that when you want it to slow down on it, on um, you know, on the growth, then you would cut it in the waning phase, which is the full moon to the new moon. So it's a uh, very interesting, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And, and they have um, still the farmer's almanac that talks about all of this. It's um, really fascinating, but it's, it's true. I've been doing this for years with, with my hair, you know, I, I will cut it to give it a trim between um, the, uh, or like I said, during the waxing phase from the new moon to the full moon. So um, if you wanna like cut your grass and you're tired of cutting it all the time, you can, <laughs> you can cut it in the waning uh, phase of the moon. But sometimes though, the, the uh, if you want to encourage that growth of your, of your grass and you would cut it in the waxing. So this is the perfect time. We're in the, the waxing phase of the moon. So uh, of course this new moon as well is um, for many American Indian tribes, this upcoming full moon is commonly known as the strawberry full moon um, or a big leaf moon. So, um, and f for the uh, Omaha, yeah, Omaha Indians is referred to as the uh, moon when the buffalo bulls hunt the cows. <laughs> Pretty interesting information, isn't it? <sighs> and, and of course, the Celtics, um, the Celtic calendar is known as the oak moon, the oak moon. So very interesting, a little bit of full moon um, details for you. <laughs> it's always fun to know all of this and, and where this information comes from. <sighs> anyway, very nice. All right, so I like to every week give um, a crystal message, a, mes a message from crystals, and a message from our spirit animals and totems. So, uh, and as well as uh, asking, of course, um, those for highest and greatest, any messages, if anybody has any questions, you can put your questions in the comments. And your questions can be a question for you personally, or if you um, would like to question what, what we're talking about, what we're discussing. And, and so the, the topic for this evening that we're going to get to um, very shortly is are you fed up with being here you know on this earth plane are you ready to leave so this is uh, i really want you to 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 watch or listen to this show to make sure you're making the right choices and that may probably pique some curiosity which is good so continue to listen uh because uh it's just mind-blowing and it's 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 just really beautiful some disinformation that's coming through and the time that we're in it really is all right so the um crystal gemstone mineral message for this week is from what's called the spirit quartz it's a spirit quartz and it's also known as uh, cactus quartz or the porcupine quartz so why would it have all these names? Well, I actually have a piece of this. Now I would like to show it to you. So the spirit quartz, cactus quartz, or porcupine quartz. In case you've seen it before, I'm trying to get a good shot of it where it's not so fuzzy. But it has a lot of, um, 
turn it a little bit so you can see. It looks like it has bumps on it, which is why you can see where it says like cactus or like a porcupine. It looks like it has, but you can see it here. Isn't that beautiful? You can see kind of, it's really sparkly, but it looks like it has a lot of bumps on it, okay? And so this is why they call it the cactus quartz, porcupine quartz, or spirit quartz. All right, and see that the coloring, the, this one here is, is the clear or the white one, all right? Now, uh, give you some properties. Oh, thank you. Yes, very. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Christina. Yeah, very pretty. <laughs> so yes, that is very, very pretty, and it's very, very powerful. Um, all right, so the spirit quartz is an unusual member of the quartz family. Um, it's a community within a stone. It has its own little community. So it's core, a larger candle-shaped crystal with a faceted termination point um, is encrusted with hundreds of smaller crystal termination points. And that's, I don't know if you were able to see that, but that's exactly how, what it looked like. I'll show it again in a few minutes for those that are coming in just now. Um, but the spirits quartz is found in the mountain regions in South America. Uh, the mountain region is um, uh, Magaliz Magalizburg. Michaelsburg, I'm probably saying it, I'm butchering it. <laughs> but anyway, it's in the mountains of South Africa. Uh, it first appeared around 2001. Most spirits quartz is amethyst, though citrine, smoky, and white quartz is also mined. So how about that? Um, in the metaphysical world, spirit quartz is the crystal of harmony and alignment. So it takes all the crystal energies of the main stone and amplifies them over and over again and all the tiny points, each reflecting light back and forth to one another so it can bathe in the combined radiance of the whole. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so there's four natural forms of spirit quartz. Four natural all right, and it's the amethyst, the citrine, the smoky, and white quartz. Sometimes they're occurring in combinations within a specimen. So there's different types. And if anyone would like to, to have the specific types, just um, message me and I'll be happy to send it on. I'm not going to go through each one, um, like the amethyst, the citrine, the smoky. But I will go over the white one because this is the one that I showed and this is the one that I have. And I will show it again because I see we have more viewers. This is the white spirit quartz, also known as cactus quartz, also known as porcupine quartz. All right. So you see all these beautiful. And this is the, the white or the clear one. All right. So I will read the properties for this one. And this one, uh, it varies from, from clear to opaque white. It's opaque white and sometimes it's called a fairy spirit quartz which i can see why fairies fairies um it activates all energy centers and is most resident uh with the physical body especially for support for uh, or support of the physical healing process and its revitalizing energy levels it clears and cleanses blockages in your in your body and your whole system and on the cellular level and attunes the aura for both healing and evolution so it is helpful tool for practitioners for extending the efforts of healing healing work and is beneficial to use like in stone layouts of the grit so white crystal representation uh or i'm sorry the white crystal represents natural cycles like birth and regeneration. Um, the feminine gender is manifest as the goddess in many, many cultures. And it, it is the order of cleanliness, purity, and unity. The white spirit quartz utilizes metal energy. It may be used um, in devotions to the Arabian moon goddess and um, the Mayan goddess of the four ages of women. It's just a very strong divine feminine type of energies 
All right. Now there are a couple of um, chemically treated uh, varieties of the spirit quartz. Okay. Um, it doesn't diminish at all the energies of the crystal, um, the chemically treated ones. This is like the energy of it. It doesn't diminish it. But I like to try to keep um, my crystals and minerals or gemstones that I get as natural as possible with very little man manipulation. Let's say that. See, man's in the word manipulation, right? So it's, I don't, you know, I'm sure it's really pretty. I know we want to experiment, but, but this is where they get the aqua aura spirit quartz. This is that light blue to aqua color. Flame aura spirit quartz to rainbow colors. All right, created from a titanium. It's alchemy coated onto the quartz. All right, so the fire crystals, it's coated. It's a coating on it. Um, I mean, they're all, I've seen them. They're very pretty. They're very nice. But again, just my personal preference is to keep it in its natural form. Um, now, spirit quartz facilitates bonding in home environments, especially when a new member joins the family. Of course, a baby or maybe uh, a young relative comes to live, whether it's it's a member of the family a foster child or adopted child. Uh, it stimulates healing and peace and harmony. If you have fighting siblings, <laughs> all right, uh, it, it helps to calm the energies, that fighting energies of, of sibling rivalries and reduces resentment and jealousy when step families merge together or when older family members must give up their home to move on. All right. Um, spirit quartz is a comforting stone. It's assisting uh, at death and transition to guide the soul through the dimensions of the afterlife and into the hands of those waiting to welcome them home. It also provides solstice and understanding for those that are left behind. So it is very powerful. You can see where the balancing comes to play, right? Spirit quartz cleanses other stones and enhances their energy and healing layouts. So it's almost like selenite. Selenite is, is also another very powerful clear, cleansing stone. Um, so the spirit quartz does the same thing. It harmonizes well with all members of the quartz and burl families, as well as moldavite, which speeds up and increases the spirit quartz effects. So I happen to have a small piece of moldavite here uh, and you want to make sure your moldavite is authentic. Uh, there, if it's moldavite's actually an asteroid, um, a meteor, and this is from Czechoslovakia. So you want to make sure you're getting authentic moldavite. And you don't really, if you get them any bigger than this, you're going to be paying a lot of money for them, <laughs> a lot of money. Um, so. Uh, that's small, and they're, they're so powerful. It doesn't really matter with the size. So this little piece right here alongside with the spirit quartz, powerful combination. So one more look at it. Um, the Moldavite with the spirit quartz together. Yeah, very nice. So I like to, uh, how I have it displayed too, I like to have it put together. I put the moldavite close to those pieces. All right. So um, that's what I like, like to do. So um, it just energizes, helps with the energies. <laughs> hey, we need all the help we can get. I mean, I have crystals and minerals all over the house and um, salt lamps and just, these are tools. Because really, if we just open up and let love and light shine through us and help create this, this beautiful vibration all around, we're not just helping our home, we're helping the land and just everyone. It's a really deep, deep connection and it's beautiful. So what I'm going to do really quick is I usually put with the crystal, mineral, and gemstone uh, for the week is in the comments. And so I will do that. It's called uh, um, Spirit Quartz, you know, also known as um, 
what did I say? Oh yeah, the, the cactus. Cactus quartz. <laughs> and por porcupine quartz. So very beautiful. All right, so I'll put that in there. Hopefully it will get show the whole thing. We'll see in just one moment. Um, but anyway, you can just listen to this. You can listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It shows it all. Okay, so um, the crystal is the mineral gemstone for the week. Spirit quartz, also known as cactus quartz. Quartz. <laughs> and porcupine quartz. I spelled that wrong. But anyway, you get the idea. Trying to run the show live and, and produce it at the same time is so much fun. <laughs> It is really. I mean, I'm used to it. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. But uh, <laughs> I could see where some people would be like, you know, oh my goodness, it's so overwhelming. Um, but it's all right. Multitasking, right? Uh, <laughs> so, all right. So, that is the uh, gemstone, crystal, and mineral message for this week. Now, we're going to move on to the spirit, animal, and totem message for this week. And that is surprisingly, should I say, uh, from the oyster. The oyster showed up. So I just thought that was, was really neat. Um, an oyster. An oyster. So what the oyster represents and the message that's a reminder for us all, all right, is to stay and live in the present, in the here and the now. Stay in the present. All right? And uh, that's very important because we have a lot of things coming up at us at the same time. What we have is we have past life. Uh, we have memories coming up that just wants to just heal. That's all it's doing. So it's leaving. It's leaving us right now. Um, uh, it's like, and and we, sh you know, all we need to do is just observe it and view it as it leaves. Maybe some final thoughts on it, comments. But then that's it. That's it. All right. And uh, so I appreciate everyone that is sharing the video as well. I can see this people are sharing it. Thank you so much for sharing the live video. Um, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, so it's um, the more that we can can share the love and light with everyone. I'm, I'm all for that. But I just, I did notice I got messages. People were sharing it. So thank you so much for sharing that. And um, all right. So now on to the spirit and animal totem of the week is, um, or it said the oyster, stay and live in the now and the present. Uh, the ability to figure out life's static energy. So when we are really still, which we're not supposed to be, everything moves constantly. Energy is constantly moving. And sometimes we want to get stagnant or we want to get still. And um, But we are energetic beings and we're going to feel that pull. We're going to keep moving even though the illusion is, is that we're still. All right. So we have to, and, and with the oyster, it helps us to figure this out. All right. Um, understand when um, to close doors to prevent energy loss. Uh, helps us to, okay, you know, I need to step away from this person situation or et cetera, because I do feel drained after being around this person or maybe being around the situation or, or just even your own thoughts. You have to learn how to put ourselves in more healthier environments. And that's it too. It's the sensitivity to the environment. We're very, very sensitive. And we need to pay attention to the signals and messages that we're getting. All right. And so, of course, we have to um, make, maintain and take care of ourselves. And uh, it also represents uh, pureness. So that's the oyster. And it's whether people like to have um, charms with, um, you know, sea life and, and what's, what's from an oyster probably has the same type of properties. Um so it's just, and I know if people are like thinking of real fuzzy or cute kind of birds or, or a, 
a bear or a tiger or something and then it's an oyster and it's like hmm okay but all of nature has messages for us absolutely they do and this is the time where we really need to make sure that we are connecting connecting uh, with nature more than ever ever before um, it's very important for us to do that and, and why is it is it's because earth has already started her transition uh, to the fifth dimension and all right so humanity must either keep up or leave seriously she is is on her fifth dimension where of course 3d third dimension now all right so what we have to do is make sure that we are continuing with our um uh, with our expansion process and for those of you who may be concerned or worried about it if you're concerned or worried about it bam right there you don't need to be all right you're already working on that if you've taken care of of expanding yourself spiritually ah <sighs> guess what you're on the right path you're on the right road don't let fear tear down everything that you have created and you have worked for so hard okay so i am getting a message here private message to share this the spirit animal in total uh so let me do that before i get on to the topic because it's a really good <coughs> topic excuse me okay so that's the topic for the week. I mean, the uh, <laughs> woo! Oh, the spirit animal and totem for the week. <clears throat> there we go. I so said for those who wanted to see this and for those of you too who are also um, watching this and viewing this maybe um, in archives, gives you a chance to, to get to feel. Uh, if you didn't get to see the comments live, this is why I'm sharing the comments so that it's making you a part of it as well. And again, you know, welcome the viewers. And if you would like to comment, uh, you can comment on the topic. You can ask questions, uh, very much interactive. So thank you so much uh, for joining in and let's have some fun and let's learn in the process. We're all learning. I learn every day. All right. We should be anyway. So I've had people always ask me, um, and they know too that I have, I've had many past lives. Well, many of us have had at least 50, if not more on this earth plane. Um, the, the spiritual warriors keep coming back. And so sometimes people have asked me, you know, you talk about Atlantis a lot. Yes. Cause I remember having the lifetimes on Atlantis. I remember the golden age of Atlantis. And yes, I came back and I've had many past lives since that time frame that I do remember and being a male warrior and I've had some female lives as well. And the, the importance of why, um, why this is, is what we're going to kind of go through without you realizing it. No, <laughs> no, you'll realize it. Um, the reason being is because many of us, uh, we are the the future. We are right here, right now. We are the current Atlanteans. Uh, we see what's going on. We see that there's a separation. And we want to bring it back to the oneness. Because the separation, we, we used to, so long ago, be whole, complete, be one. And then we separated. We fell. And we had to work ourselves back back up. And um, it really is happening. And I know many of you are, you know, look at the news, look at the world, what's going on around now, and think, oh my gosh, we're going to hell in a handbasket really quick. There, there's just no way we're going to pull through this. And stop, because what you're seeing is very low vibrational you're stuck in the third dimension the 3d energy all right so i've talked about this before but i'm going to go into a little bit more details here and um 
just expand each time on it so that it doesn't almost say scare people. But I really want you to watch your thinking. You know, there, there is no Scotty beam me up. Uh, <laughs> get me off this planet I want to go. Why? Why do you want to go? It is hard here. But let me tell you, we are so close to peace on this earth again. You heard me right. We are. You know, it seems like it gets worse before it gets better. People ask, well, Tiffany, what's going to happen with the 3D? So I take it to my angelic, uh, my circle of angelic guides or these, these light beings. They're very high vibrational. I've asked them. And they will, and what they have communicated was that it's going to just implode. The 3D energy will implode upon itself. These are the greedy people. These are people that don't want to change. It's going to implode and disappear off this earth plane. Yes, it will. Wow. Okay, so what we're going to be left with is fifth dimensional energy. Because Mother Earth is only going to keep people who's going to match her vibration and her energy. She is a living being and has her own mission as well. All right. This is unheard of. This is beautiful. I don't want to say unheard of. This is free will even for a planet. Isn't that mind-blowing? <sighs> Uh, who who would have thought that thousands of years ago that there would be peace back on this earth again? Um, so I need you to have an open mind if I as I continue on now because it's really going to require you to expand your belief. I need you to let go and surrender and let's get through this. All right. So um, I'm going to really get into the nitty gritty of it. I also would like to invite those, like I said, you can comment, you can ask some questions. And what I'll do is at the end of the show, people have questions. I want to share some cards with you too. I got a new deck of cards. It's the Angels of Atlantis, which I you discovered that these are the these light beings that I've been talking to ever since my youth. Um, so it's great that other people are acknowledging them. And um, it's a very beautiful deck. It also has, I did get the book as well, so I can read that. But there is a, a big book. And, uh, of course, it, the, the deck does come with a small book. And this is by Stuart Pierce. But um, if we have time at the end and if people start asking questions and they want a little, they want a message when we pull one of those cards, I'll be happy to do that for you. And... Uh, don't despair, everyone. You always get a chance to watch this live on Mondays, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So you, you'll catch me one day if, you know. <laughs> All right. So I do want to go over some things with you and just the importance of um, that we got past 2012. And I'm, I'm reading a book. I was guided to read um, this, this book, and it was written in 2011, so right before 2012. But it's called Atlantis and the New Consciousness. All right. And it's by Stuart Wilson and Joanna uh, Prentice. Prentice. Uh, these two, they are hypnotherapists. And they got their information from some of their patients that they were hypnotizing. Um, and they just, you know, just sat there and monitored everything and just let it all happen. And... What they realize is they had all this wonderful material material for not just Atlantis books. They have a couple of more uh, books um, I could save for another time. I just want to show you real quick. But they also, they got enough information about Jesus or Yeshua's lifetime and the community he lived in. Uh-huh. The Essenes. Uh, and also the power of the Magdalene. I've always been very strongly attracted to... The divine feminine, or there's Mother Mary. And when we say Mother Mary, we could be talking about Mary Magdalene too, because she was a mother. Yes, she was. Uh, and, you know, Isis and, and all these beautiful, powerful goddesses and the, that represent the divine feminine. All right. So uh, here are some things that I love reading this because it validates everything that I've been getting in channeling and uh, and also to just maybe to help 
I, I always like spinning it or hearing it a different way or maybe just for validation. But, um, all right, so there is a much bigger context for getting past 2012. And the whole galaxy is rising in vibration. Do you hear me? The whole galaxy is rising in vibration and ascending into the light and returning to source. You've probably heard it's the source to the oneness to that one. All right, we're returning to that. Um, this is a major shift in emphasis within all creation as God stops moving outwards and down into matter and starts moving inwards and up into the light. Isn't that beautiful? I love how that was put. Like, yes, spot on. I'm going to repeat it. All right, let, let these words just wash over you. This is a major shift where all creation for all creation is God stops moving outwards and down into matter and starts moving inwards within and up into the light. Isn't that beautiful? The whole pattern of activity within the universe is beginning to reflect this shift and the changes are all experiencing on the earth need to be seen as part of this bigger picture. They want you to keep an eye on the bigger picture. All right. And not focus so much on, on what's going on in the third dimension and what's they're going to behave very badly. They, they know that their time is limited here and they are going to just show off now. They're going to be in their glory. They're fighting because they're losing power. All right. They're losing control because control is 3D, mind driven. All right. And I'm not saying that your mind is bad. It's not. All right. It's the separation that's doing that. In 3D, there is a lot of separation. All right, so as we move into the 5D, which is about command, the command from the heart. So it's the sacred heart center and the mind working together. So we're moving more into the command dimension, all right, of 5D and above. Because there's many of us who've been in on this 3D dimension who, who vibrate higher and higher frequencies and higher dimensions. All right. And once you start to expand your awareness and think about God as the whole of universal consciousness, many of the things really start to fall into place. For example, you'll begin to understand why God is not exempt from the patterns of change. But if you, if you think of God as the, that oneness, that one consciousness, of everyone, of all the consciousnesses in the universe, then it becomes clear that as all beings learn and grow and develop, so God must change and develop too. God, experience, our creator, the, we all are learning from each other. This is the beauty of the oneness. We all learn from each other. All right? So... That's beautiful. All right. Um, perceptions will alter. We're seeing this now. Values evolve. Consciousness expands. All right. Um, and change is seen at every level of development. And that's the one thing you can always rely on is change. Because we're constantly moving. All right. We're not rigid and fixed. This, we're in our inner... Again, we're energetic beings. We can't be rigid and fixed, right? So what I thought was really great, too, is that uh, in, in this book, and again, for those just joining, it's Atlantis and the New Consciousness, um, written by two hypnotherapists, Stuart Wilson and Joanna Prentice. I'll repeat that for you again. Um, is that when they were channeling this, or excuse me, when they had under hypnosis was one person talking about their Atlantis life, their past life, they asked questions that this particular person couldn't answer. And the person said, well, hold on. I communicate with one of the angels of Atlantis or a light being. Let them answer. 
And so it was really cool that that information came through. Then they started asking this particular um, angelic being, this light being questions, and they were able to get back during um, sessions and continue the conversation. And like I said, it's just this beautiful validation uh, of, for me. It's just, it's really great. But um, all right, so uh, the angel that they were channeling, um, all, all, all real, all real, I do believe that's all real, um, that yes, this evolution towards higher levels of consciousness, uh, we are awakening. Light is the key symbol of transformation, and the heart is the focus point on this process of change, the sacred heart center, or, you know, what I always call the sacred heart center. So when we expand our consciousness, we become open to options that go far beyond anything, anything that we can now imagine. It is important to know who you've been in order to understand who you are. And this is where that really ancient and old wise statement of know thyself comes from. All right. You have to know who you've been in order to understand who you are right here, right now. All right. It is equally important to let go of the drama of past lives and even this life and focus on being here in the now. All right. So we have been moving into these higher vibrations. Um, the need to resolve past life energies will steadily be replaced by the need to reconnect with the soul and activate the sacred heart center. Oh yeah. So we're letting go all of that. I honor and am grateful for all my past experiences and help me to, to know who I am now, know thyself, and how I'm going to proceed for the future while I'm in the now. <laughs> As your consciousness expands, your perception of, of God will evolve and expand too. And, and, and these perceptions will become more universal, all right, and more transpersonal. We have to stop taking things so darn personal. We have to stop um, being so offensive and offended over every little thing. That keeps us in that separation phase. It really does. All right. Um, the steadily process of planetary systems towards the light has been marked by a few moments of massive breakthroughs. Um, it, ever since really 1987, they call it the harmonic convergence. That's when that's 1987. And then um, significant changes from 1987 to 2012, and now massive and very fast shift and expansion and changes since 2012. The last six years, I can't add five. <laughs> that's been really, really fast, hasn't it? He's just going by so quick. Um, <clears throat> spiritual teaching and mentoring on this planet has not been a series of solo performances, but a vast team effort. Think of all the spiritual teachers that are out there. This is teamwork and involving initiates, initiates, um, the, the angels and star beings. All right. As we evolve, the difference between human beings, star beings and angelic beings will steadily diminish. As the streams of life progress, they naturally converge. So all sentient beings in the universe evolve towards the ultimate level of the one. Of the one. Of the one. It's beautiful. Spirit transforms the normal functioning of space and time. The more you enter this, the level of spirit, the more multidimensional you become. All right, you you really do become multidimensional now. For me, like I said, I know this that my eating habits have changed, but time will even slip even more. It's not that I don't care about time. I've always been on my own 
time anyway. People who know me from way back, <laughs> you know, oh, Tiffany, you're always late. I'm not late. I'm right on my time. I don't allow a watch or a clock or a timepiece to tell me how to run or monitor or dictate my life. Never have. And I guess it's like what, what a big struggle other than English pronouncing words now. <laughs> Other than speaking, uh, <laughs> um, that has been very frustrating. It's like, gosh darn it. And then you can can experience now uh, whether time's speeding up or slowing down, or it just seems like, wow, what in the world happened? I lost this chunk of time. Uh, and, and that's okay. We have to be gentle with ourselves. Um, I, I'm sure with some people it could be very stressful if you do have to live by the clock like tells you what time to work what time to do this yeah you know, people will think about that aren't we you know oh break time coffee time you know breakfast lunch dinner all dictated by time no why don't we just listen to our bodies and that's what i've been doing too is i eat when i'm hungry and just small little meals and if you don't want a big meal come dinner time which is really unhealthy anyway don't do it. You should have your bigger meal, you know, but between noon and three in the afternoon anyway. That was always the healthier way to eat. Really, really big. Why would we pump ourselves full of food and then go to bed two to three hours later? Never made sense to me. Anyway, allow these changes, allow these things to happen and to occur with you. And just notice it. Notice it. All right. Um so the fifth dimension is is so dramatically different to the the third dimension, the three D. All right, and this experience will involve a vibrational shift, which will tilt and realign your consciousness. It will lift and realign your consciousness. And this is why we have to surrender and allow that to happen, because when you start to feel a movement you start to feel like you're pushed or you're or you're nudged or you're you know and wait a minute did I authorize this and then we start to resist if we're not okay with it don't we well when this is what I say or the word I shouldn't say it's me I'm just channeling surrender comes into place we need to just trust and surrender all right uh, we are multidimensional and meta gifted beings who are starting to step into the power and expand our consciousness. All right. So when our consciousness expands, your vib our vibration rises and our DNA changes. Our DNA is changing already. And the chakras start to vibrate and unify so much more stronger and better than they ever did before so much you know okay let's go get some energetic healing let's make sure that our chakras are in alignment and but as we expand and do this it's just going to happen and occur naturally absolutely um because when the chakras unify you become you become that conduit that that crucible for what spiritual transformation can occur you're allowing it now. You're open, you're expanded, you're allowing all of this to, to happen. Okay. So uh, let's get into the nitty gritty here, the details, the last 10 minutes. What's going to happen to the third dimension? When I say implode and leave this earth plane, what does that mean? What does it mean? All right. And um, I had always heard, Yes, it was going to come off this earth that we know it. Peace is going to, to reign again. And within my lifetime, I always knew in this life that that um, I'm going to see peace by the time I by the time my mission's done on this earth plane at this particular moment. I know that this is the life where I will see that. Always known that. No, 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 that. And I tell people they look at me like I'm nuts because of all the news and the disasters and killings and everything else that's going on. And it's like, yeah, but just wait till the more natural uh, disasters are going to start to happen and start to wipe off people too. Now, before, again, this is not to 
induce fear. This is where you need to make this choice right now. Do you want to be here or do you want to leave? Those that want to stay will be in the fifth dimension with the earth. Those that don't want to be here and want to stay in the 3D will be taken off this earth plane. All right. So now where will that, where will that energy go? Um, I'm going to read the little... Uh, but before I address that, because that's huge, is most people say, well, why do we skip from the third dimension to the fifth dimension? What happens to the fourth dimension? You know what the fourth dimension is? The fourth dimension is heaven. So we call heaven. All right. Um, so the fourth dimension is where spirit lives it's where our loved ones are okay and so that's what the fourth dimension is every 3d planet has a 4d uh because that's where our loved ones go to all right so um know though that you can only ascend this whole thing free will um, your mission when your mission on earth is completed. Okay, so it's because it's up to you to decide when you want to complete it. That's that's that whole free will. And yes, your higher self will decide when the job is done. The timing is entirely in your hands. We can live longer in this type of vibration. And, and oh wow, we've read about this in ancient documents and texts about how people lived so much longer in the higher vibrations. Uh, death as we know it will will change, shift, and, and, and occur. And we'll slowly, we'll talk about that another time. Um, maybe I'll see if we can squeeze that in at the end. But everything, we're just shifting and changing so much. So fourth dimension is where our loved ones are. Every 3D planet or 3D existence has a fourth dimension to hold this, that, that spirit. And a lot of our spirit guides are on fourth dimension. So those that talk to angelic beings, those that talk to um, higher vibrational beings are going 5D and higher. All right. So whatever dimension you're in, you can look down at. So we're in the fifth dimension. We can, and I don't mean look down in a bad way. I mean, we can see it. We can see the fourth dimension in the third dimension. All right, we can see that. And the higher we go, the we can see below us. Yes, we can see um, uh, um, the upper vibrations, but how, guess how? Through meditation. All right? Because when we keep going up there, up, let's get higher, let's get higher, and then we come back down because we can't make it stick. We can't stay there. It's almost like um, this is why meditation is important because it's almost like that starter screw or like you would know, you try to to hang a picture or screw something into a wall and the wall's really hard plaster or really hard breaker you have to have a drill to pre-drill it right well meditation is the pre-drill meditation gets us into the upper vibrations and get us used to going there and creates that path and then we can get back to it and and the more we get back to the upper vibrations and we stay there and stay there and make it a daily practice to get in these upper vibrations, it finally sticks, all right? And the first person to drill or pave the path for us was Jesus, was Yeshua. He paved that path of light for us. And most people may have a hard spot with this, but Yeshua had, and I know him by Yeshua, had past lives in Atlantis. He was a priestess. He was a female. Um, and, and he tried then with the fall of Atlantis, he tried at the particular time to lay that path of light, but we were so off um, balance that it didn't stick. So he had to come back and he was able to, that we know that the, you know, um, whether it's the Bible or what we've been told and what we know that yes, thousands of years ago, Yeshua was successful and finally laying that path of light that all of us are finding, that us light workers, so to speak, are finding, and this is what we're utilizing. So he pre-drilled the way into these upper vibrations that we can, here we are, 
let's go, let's go. But it takes practice. And, it, and I have said before that you get to the point to where meditation is just part of your daily life. And you're doing it every day. You're doing, you're being, you're being. You're incorporating the being into your life every day. And it's not meditation is being still, but it's being here. It's being in the now and in multidimensional at the same time. It's just being aware. All right. And for those of us who have done this, I mean, I used to set aside specific times for meditation, whether it was journaling, um, spirit communication. And guess what? I'm doing it all the time now. And, and this is what I'm saying. Everyone is experiencing this that I talk to in one way, shape, or form. So it's like not that you're not making time for it. It's just you're doing it all day long now. It's in different, uh, maybe in different phases, but it's just happening and occurring naturally. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So <laughs> I get carried away sometimes with these things. Um, I want to, okay, so here we go. Um, free will will still exist um, when we get into the fifth dimension. All right. Uh, but the thing is, is that we really leave the ego dominant personality fully into the soul level. And that's just going to be, I don't think it's something that we can even really comprehend that. It's like, wow, mind blowing. All right. Um, okay. So what's going to happen to the 3D? I said it implodes, but what's going to happen? What's going to happen to these people and to these energies and to these 3D beings? Where are they going to go? Um, was a question I did ask and they told me they're like, okay, you have to expand your mind, but they're, co they're being taken off this earth. Okay. That's fine. And then I was all right. I didn't really like need to know the specifics, but found out the specifics. They said it in this book. And when I asked and they valid, they were like, yes, absolutely. So here we go. Um, so the people who wish to continue with war and conflict and heavy density activities can continue to do that, but they will have to do it on another planet because Earth will not allow that anymore. When Earth goes through her transition, when she finishes and fully is anchored into the fifth dimension, Earth will be a perfect home for fifth dimensional beings but a very uncomfortable place for the third dimensional beings. However, there is a nice 3D planet that has been prepared for them by the angelic host. And this is a, many times you've heard me in the past say there's a fine line between angels and aliens. These angelic alien light beings who seeded planet Earth, who are our ancestors really all right are looking out for us so there's already another 3d planet ready it's been prepared and this preparations for what they call earth mark two has been well in advance for a very long time now they've been working on that for a long time it's ready and that's where they're going to go when they are born uh, when they are born, when they're taken off of here and born into that 3D energy, it's going to be just like how we were. They're, they're not going to have this with amnesia. They're not going to know where they came from. They're going to think they've been there forever. And, and that's that. All right. Um, until free will, they want to stop and they want to raise vibration. Then sure, they could do that. Uh, you know, so it's um, something that they'll have to work towards. But for those of us who have worked so hard to help maintain peace back on this earth, and I have to tell you, I just, it's been validated with so many light workers. Um, Diana Cooper talks about us getting back to, to that golden age in 2032. People, that's 15 years from now. I'll still be here. <laughs> that's 15 years from now but even when i'm talking to the angelic beings they're telling me we, we're just speeding up it's going to be sooner than 15 years but if it's 10 years 
what if all of more of us light workers are activating and and expanding and it just catches on and it can be so much faster so it really is so close For all of us who have suffered in, in past lives this is what we've worked so hard for to see peace back on this earth darn right i'm hanging around to see this you know tortured and killed and how many of us have been tortured and killed for our beliefs and for secrets that maybe we've protected we know about the oneness and we're getting back to that and it just i cried out of happiness when i realized that it is so close it really really is people and so please search your hearts this is what we have to do where do you want to go do you want to stay in the third dimension or do you want to, want to join everyone in the fifth dimension? You know, you want to join the earth in our fifth dimension. Let's do this. We got this. We can do it. And um, absolutely. We've already started. For those of us who are really concerned about that, the people stuck in 3D is not going to watch this show. It's not going to watch anything spiritual based. <laughs> All right. Now, also know this really quick on the final note. If I cut off on radio, I'm sorry. Thank you, everyone on radio for listening. Um, but I just would like to say, know that if you're a very high vibrational person and the only one in your family, you are making a difference. You are helping them because they can't live in a high vibrational place without making some sort of change. They're either going to live or they're going to get on board with it as well. So whether it's your family, your friends, your community, um, we really are all making a difference. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone who has um, listened to the show and has watched the show. And there's a lot of great information that came through. And so maybe next show I'll devote just to you, to um, the viewers to ask questions. Cause I got a lot of new decks that I would love to share with y'all too. Some Oracle uh, decks. All right. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, please um, don't hesitate to visit my website. I'm going to put it in the comment comments here, but I will say it as well for those who, who listen um, via radio or, or is just listening to this but my website is white sage woman.com and i'm saying sage s-a-g-e white sage woman.com so be sure to check out the website like i said if you have any questions whatsoever you can contact me through the website all right and thank you so much for sitting in sacred space with each and every one of us this evening and as we are giving and receiving healing peace love and light and may the obstacles to your flight be few and the blessings along your journey be many good night everyone thank you for using blog talk radio